Have you seen this post the Division 2 made on Twitter? X. You called it Twitter. It's now called X. Get it right, Tux. It's the year five season three snapshot. And if this is what the devs think, boy, are we in a lot of trouble. Year five season three is coming to a wrap. And recently the division two made this post on Twitter. And at first, oh, well, how nice. But upon a closer inspection, you might just be thinking the devs must be crazy because no way is all of this true. I need to talk to their numbers guy because if this is what he's feeding their team, Wow, we're all in some serious trouble. So we're gonna jump into the details here, but as a quick recap, year five, season three, as far as seasonal deliveries, wasn't the hottest that we've ever got. Don't sugarcoat it. All the gears sucked. It might even be one of the worst, but that was masked by the delivery of Project Resolve, which was an initiative that happened to launch at the same time as season three. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize how crappy the season deliverables were because Project Resolve sort of chocolate coated the shit if you know what i mean so as usual we got three exotics a gear set and a brand set and a couple of weapons the brand set was palisades which was definitely the best of the lot and then we got the aegis gear set which for most went straight to the stash we got a couple of named weapons that nobody's really using and then three exotics the exotics were so bad I don't even remember what they were. And personally, I've been passionate about this topic because I just don't think we can afford in the Division 2 zero for three exotics hitting the mark. On top of that, to get a gear set that nobody uses, especially when we have serious stash space issues, it's essentially bloating our content because it looks like we're getting lots of stuff. The devs think they're giving us a lot of stuff, but in reality, it's nothing that the community wants, needs, or even uses. So let's go back to this Twitter post. So year five, season three snapshots. Take this one step at a time. So the first thing it says is reanimated was the most played global event. And I buy that. Checks out. It's pretty fun. It's pretty powerful. It says 80 million items looted. Probably true. Yeah, but 79 million were probably trash. 7 million paradise lost wins. How many Ouroboros were delivered, I wonder? We just did a Community Paradise Lost run the other day. Did tons of runs. We only got two Ouroboros. 700,000 items extracted in the Dark Zone. Is that number good? It doesn't look good. It sounds big, but what are we measuring that against? Who the hell in the right mind is spending time in the Dark Zone? Just stop. And check this one out. The Mosquito is the most used weapon in Year 5 Season 3. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> My mind won't even let me process that. <laughs> so just think about that for a second. Do you or do you know anybody that uses the mosquito? If so, refer them to our hotline. 1-800-YOUR-BUILD-SUCKS. How is this possible? There's just no way. There's no stat to it or anything, but this exotic was dead on arrival. I've never created a build for it. I don't know anybody that advocates for it. And maybe there's an application or two in a raid, but this thing has been reported to not even work in Paradise Lost, which you think would be the best place to use it since this game mode has a lot of aggro mechanics and it doesn't work in there. So what the hell? So in what way is this weapon good? So here's what the Mosquito does. It has a talent called Mosquito Song. So hitting an enemy applies a stack. Stacks are shared between players. At 10 stacks, the enemy will forcefully target the last player to apply a stack for five seconds. What? Yeah, that even sounds confusing. To apply a stack for five seconds, what? Stacks deplete every five seconds. Activating the effect on an enemy will remove all stacks from other enemies. Like what a pain in the butt description, first of all. But yeah, that's what this thing does. It basically forces attention from the enemy, which makes it ideal for group scenarios, but against who and what? So this would be important for like major bosses, bosses with a long time to kill, like legendary bosses, raid bosses, incursion bosses. Those kind of dudes. And nobody is using this because the best strategy in most of those cases is just to kill the boss and to have all four players on deck to do so. Now I'm gonna put raids aside because I don't know if anybody is using this in the raids, but here's the deal with raids. The methods have been developed to complete these raids quickly and those methods aren't broken so they don't need to be fixed. So the reality is to introduce the mosquito to a raid mechanic to taking down one of those bosses. Although it may work in one of those situations and honestly, I don't know, I'm just speculating here. Let's just say it does work in one of those situations. It's a new way to do it 
But is it a better way to do it than those methods that are already being deployed, practiced, proven, and learned? I'm not trying to throw shade at the devs here, but there's just no way that this weapon is the most used in season in any season now or will it be in the future this weapon was dead on arrival although it looks cool it's a horribly designed exotic it totally needs a rework so i feel like the stat man here is twisting words to make this statement or he left some out it would be more proper to say it this way then yeah i believe it aegis most used gear set. Holy moly, the devs must be crazy. There's absolutely no way. Let's take a look at this Aegis gear set. By running two pieces of Aegis, you get 70% health. Right there, there's your proof, dead. Dead on arrival. Three pieces gives you 15% total armor. Okay, fine, I guess. And here's the four piece bonus. So stoic, get 3% damage resistance for every enemy that is targeting you. The bonus is multiplied by one X where X is the number of agents in your group. So it scales because the damage from the enemy scales, but that doesn't mean you necessarily get stronger. You just maintain some level of resistance as you're adding more group members. So it seems like a tank build to some degree, but if you try running this, you absolutely cannot sustain any significant damage. You go down really fast. So what is the resistance supposed to be buying you? What is it doing for you? What application would you use this in? And you think in team dynamics, we're talking like legendary, but this gear set does not stand up in legendary. Why would you use it over foundry? Now I know there's one out of 100,000 people that are probably using this, but there's just no way that this is going to be the most used gear set in year five, season three. Yeah, Aegis and all its unlimited applications is being used more than the striker gear set. Huh. This was dead on arrival. Scan the builds, scan YouTube, see how many Aegis builds are out there. And so the only way this statement could be true if it was rewritten, maybe to be something like that. And notice it said nothing about the Vindicator. That's sort of interesting, but you'd think that the Vindicator would be used more than the Mosquito, even though the Vindicator is dramatically underwhelming, it's still better than the Mosquito. The talent is called Ortiz, and while scoped, the weapon will highlight random body sections, and the weapon amplifies damage by 40%, but it's still really weak, and, and because it's really weak, you don't really wanna be aiming at people's toes because it's gonna create even more misses. So in order for this to work, it really needs to be like godly type damage, and- That's definitely not what they deliver. And on top of that, anytime the devs have tried to incorporate the weapon selecting targets for us or body parts of targets for us, it's just never gone well. So that's the three exotics that we got. Let's just admit it, all of them suck. They're not getting any playtime and the Aegis gear set is right there with it. So all jokes aside, if these are the figures that the devs are going by, and I would just have to assume that because these are the figures that they're presenting, then I'm extremely worried because that means no matter what feedback we're providing to them through the channels that we have available, their stats are saying otherwise. So our feedback might be, whether it's from the PTS or through social media channels, that the mosquito sucks. But the best way to deliver that feedback is through data. And that data you would want to say that nobody's using the mosquito, usage time. But apparently their data is saying that is not just the most used exotic, it's the most used weapon in the season. But you have to analyze the numbers. And if that is what the devs believe, then the devs must be crazy. You would have to be extremely out of touch with your community in order to let that stat fly, which leads me to this upcoming season. So oh, year six, box. season one is literally days away. And what we saw in the PTS as that? far as gear was, again, extremely underwhelming. As far as what they targeted to deliver, I think it was on point. So we're getting a rifle gear set. The problem is the mechanics built into it and the damage values, they're just not really adding up. And so it's coming out a little underwhelming, but it's workable. And that feedback was basically community unanimous. So did the devs hear it? Are the devs listening? We're reportedly getting exotic knee pads that will allow us to go faster and an exotic shotgun that's gonna slow enemy movement on hit. The use case for both of those is extremely limited and makes it difficult to equip over other possible exotics. Again, a strong majority of the community provided that feedback. And finally, the third exotic isn't even a new exotic. It's a rework of an old, probably the worst exotic in the game, the Diamondback, a weapon that selects targets for you and they just make 
made some minor tweaks. That thing is buried so deep in our stash. Such a waste of time. The changes they made to that gun is not gonna make it more appealing than it is. And that makes year six, season one deliverables, or what we would call new content, very shaky and if those things are delivered as they were seen in the pts then we would have zero of six exotics hitting the mark another gear set being delivered that's just going to take up stash space and we just cannot afford this as a community and they canceled our face to face time with the devs that one hour season reveal we typically get the day before because of ubisoft forward and i really doubt we're going to get the level of detail we would normally get during the ubisoft forward event which will probably at least show the roadmap in year six season one highlights but it's nearly not enough because it's more important that we see what is being delivered as far as gear and the devs thoughts behind that because i gotta say it would not surprise me if the devs deliver the gear as we saw it in the pts i'm seeing a trend or a disconnect between what the community is delivering in the form of feedback and what the devs are delivering in the form of content you just not figuring that out jeez man catch up thank you for hanging out with me today my name is tuxedo bandito that's tito bandito what's crack a -lackin'? this was another episode of the division 2 if you found this video helpful subscribe like and turn on notifications to ensure you don't miss out on the fantastic experiences waiting for you in the division 2 and if you like builds like this check out the recommended build video i have here for you if you have anything you want to see covered be sure to let me know in the comments below and thank you to all the channel members and donors who make everything possible tux nation wouldn't be without you when you buy a game from ubisoft enter the creator code Tuxedo Bandito to support the channel. Easy peasy. Follow me. I get it.